Good evening, class. So this will be a continuation of our lecture on the law and sales. Our topic for tonight will be Chapter 5, The Obligations of the Vendi. So anyway, the source materials for this lecture will be the same. So alam nyo naman kung ano talaga dapat ang basahin yung libro. Kung ayaw nyo magbasa ng libro, eh di manood na lang kayo dito. Nasa iyo yan, you have uh, all the choices and you have all the resources. Anyway, uh, let's uh, begin with the obligations of the Vendi. So there are principal obligations of buyers as provided for in 1582. In 1582, sabi niya, the obligation of a buyer is to accept delivery of the goods uh, delivered by the seller or uh, pwede rin galing sa carrier as the case may be, depending sa pinag-usapan ng buyer and seller. Also take note that the buyer should pay the price. This is uh, very obvious. The contract of sale being an onerous contract, and also uh, take note that uh, contract of sale being commutative. So, kailangan bayaran ng uh, buyer yung price. In your book, uh, there are additional um, obligations of the buyer. Pero ito talaga yung principal. So, remember, in your book, um, bear expenses for the execution and registration of the sale if this is stipulated. So, remember class, if there is no stipulation as to this it will be the seller who will bear the expenses for uh, registration and execution of uh, the sale. Now, also take note that among the obligations of your buyer is to put the goods, to pay the expenses uh, for putting the goods in a deliverable uh, state. But again, take note that this will be based only by uh, on the stipulation of the parties. So, if there is no stipulation, it will be the seller who has to um, place yung mga objects in or yung mga goods in a deliverable state. Now, take note of the important rules when it comes to this. Number one, in a contract of sale, the vendor is not required to deliver the thing sold until the price is paid by the vendee. So, also vice versa. So, meaning... Uh, the buyer is not obliged to pay the price before the thing is delivered in the absence of any agreement to the contrary. So this is um, the sa a sale being a bilateral contract. Take note class na uh, if one is not ready to fulfill yung kanyang obligation, the other one cannot be compelled to fulfill yung kanyang obligation. So if the seller is not uh, ready to deliver, the buyer cannot be compelled to pay the price. Now, if the buyer um, is not ready to pay, the buyer, the seller cannot be compelled to deliver. But obviously, this is subject to a stipulation to the contrary. Meaning, kung halimbawa, yung um, buyer uh, binigyan ng time to deliver, in which case, uh, syempre, uh, in the meantime, while hinihintay yung uh, payment or period for payment, the seller has to deliver the goods. Anyway, we will discuss that later on being part of the uh, pertinent rule. So, uh, bilateral. Now, obviously, if the seller delivers the goods, uh, the buyer is now obliged to pay for the price. So, take note in a bilateral or reciprocal obligation as in 1191, which we have already studied repeatedly. Um, so, sa oblikon pa lang yun. So anyway, um, ang sabi natin dyan, uh, performance of one of the parties in a, a bilateral or reciprocal contract, uh, delay by the other begins. So if the seller delivers the goods, uh, yung buyer is already uh, in delay in paying the price. So meaning the price from the buyer is uh, demandable already. So, yun ang tatandaan natin. So, let us say, class, um, in our example, uh, seller sells to buyer a car worth uh, 50,000 pesos. So, remember, class, uh, the seller is not bound to deliver the car if uh, the buyer uh, does not want to pay or cannot pay. And neither is the buyer required to pay 50,000 pesos until the car is delivered to him. Now, if one of the parties perform yung kanyang obligation, um, the other party will be guilty of delay. So, delay by the other party begins. Now, number two, if stipulated, the buyer is bound to accept delivery 
and to pay the price at the time and place designated. So if there is an agreement na o oh, bayad ang bayaran at direveran ay two weeks from today. So uh, yung lugar is yung bahay ng bayar ganon or yung sa may plaza or sa Mariaxina Park whatsoever is the stipulation. So obviously the buyer is bound to accept delivery. Siyempre, sisipot doon yung ano eh, seller. Pupunta siya doon. And uh, daladala niya yung kotse. Let us take our example a while ago. So, the buyer now is bound to accept delivery of the car and to pay the price at the time and place designated. So, that is two weeks from now. Dala na ni seller yung ano, yung uh, kotse doon sa place designated. The buyer is bound to accept delivery and thereafter pay uh, the price what else um number three if there is no stipulation as to the time and place of payment and delivery the buyer is bound to pay at the time and place of delivery so walang pinag-usapan na time and place of payment wala ring pinag-usapan na time and place of delivery so wala talagang usapan kung kailan ang bayaran wala ring usapan kung kailan ng deliveran. Ano ba naman yung naimbento kong term deliveran? Pero anyway, if the seller comes to the buyer uh, delivering the thing, obviously, the buyer has to pay the price at the time and at the place of uh, delivery by the seller. So, if the seller comes to the house of the buyer and delivers this car, remember that the buyer has to pay uh, yung car at the time and place of delivery. So, yun ang number three. In number four, in the absence also of stipulation as to the place of delivery, it shall be made wherever the thing might be at the moment the contract was perfected. So, remember, take note uh, that if there is no stipulation as to where the place of delivery is, uh, remember the rule in case of specific objects which we have already studied. Sabi natin pagka specific objects, um, the place of delivery is where the specific object is at at the time of perfection of the contract. So take note here class na um, yung place of delivery will be wherever the car is so let us say the car is in san vicente the buyer lives in san miguel the seller lives in ligtasan so take note class that the place of delivery is wherever the car is so in our example it will be in san vicente so that is the place of delivery and also that will be the place of payment now uh, number five if only the time for delivery of the thing sold has been fixed in the contract. Deliver two weeks from today. So remember class that the buyer is required to pay even before the thing is delivered to him. Bakit? Kasi sinuspend yung delivery by stipulation of the parties. Now what if, balik tarin natin, if only the time for payment of the price has been fixed, so pay two weeks from today. So, nagkaroon ng um, period for payment. So, payment is suspended until arrival of the period the buyer is entitled to delivery. So, in short, seller must deliver even before the price is paid to him by the buyer. So, remember, these are the pertinent rules when it comes to um, payment of the price and also when it comes to acceptance of delivery. Now, um... Take note of the effects of deviations from the contract. If the seller is forced to deviate from the provisions of the contract but the buyer consents or agrees to such deviations, the buyer should still pay the price. So, merong deviations, um, merong uh, iniba sa kontrata yung uh, seller. But if the buyer agrees to the changes made by the seller, uh, remember, the buyer should still pay the purchase price. What else? Uh, take note of um, the rules governing delivery on by installments. In installments, ang nakalagay kasi dito. Eh. So anyway, um, 
In case of delivery in installments, the general rule is that um, the buyer is not bound to receive delivery of the goods in installments. So, remember class, ang rule kasi natin is integrity of prestation. As a general rule, bawal ang mga installments. Now, take note that um, the buyer is entitled to delivery of all the goods at the same time and Obviously, on the part of the buyer, he has the duty to receive delivery of the goods, of all of the goods at the same time. So, take note also that on the part of the buyer, he has no right to pay the price in installments. Again, uh, remember the rule of integrity of prestation. And uh, take note also that the buyer cannot be required to make partial payments. Pero siyempre, because of the principle of autonomy of contracts, the buyer and the seller may agree to payment in installments and also delivery by installments. Now obviously, because this is a general rule, there are exceptions. In this case, class, there are two. Now the first exception is where a separate price has been fixed for each installment. So there is an agreement between the parties that a separate price will be fixed for each installment. So itong um, seller is obviously allowed to deliver by installment. installments. The buyer is also allowed to pay by installment. And remember, a separate uh, price has been fixed for each installment. So remember here, it depends in each case on the terms of the contract as well as the circumstances of the case whether the breach is uh, divisible or not. So, whether the breach thereof is severable or not. So, depende yan. Tingnan muna natin kung ano ang nakalagay sa contract. Now, uh, in uh, letter A, if the breach affects the entire contract. So, by the terms of uh, this contract, even if the uh, sale is... Um, even if delivery of the seller is by installment, even if payment is by installment and there is a separate price for each installment but by the terms of the contract yung uh, breach will affect uh, the entire contract uh, take note here class that if the seller makes defective partial or incomplete deliveries or the buyer wrongfully neglects or refuses to accept delivery or fails to pay any installment so here class seller is allowed to make uh, installment deliveries but the installment deliveries ng seller is defective partial or incomplete or probably he did not even deliver one installment uh, or several uh, on the part of the buyer naman uh, the buyer wrongfully neglects or uh, refuses to accept delivery so meaning there is uh, no justifiable reason for refusing delivery or the buyer fails to pay any installment take note here that if the breach affects uh, the entire contract, the injured the injured party may sue for damages for breach of the entire contract if, only if, the breach is uh, material. So, remember in these kinds of uh, contracts, uh, the breach of one installment prevents the further performance of the contract. Let us say it's um, delivery for... Um, um, car to be assembled. So, bawat isang part, part by part yan, ang pag-a-assemble. Tapos, syempre, um, may time dyan. Una muna ito, una muna ito. Tapos, ito ang price para sa ganito. Tapos, uh, take note that if the seller fails to deliver one uh, installment or one part of yung uh, car to be assembled. So, here, remember, yung breach ng one installment or failure to deliver, to deliver one part prevents the further performance of the contract. Kailangan kasi ito eh. So, bago magawa itong ibang portions, ganyan, uh, kailangan ito. So, might not be an on-point example because actually, di ko naman alam kung paano mag-assemble ng car eh. Pero iniisip ko na. Part by part yan, piece by piece, time by time, ganyan. Meron, meron tayong silusundan na schedule. So, anyway, um, breach um, here is material as to the effect, as to effect the uh, contract as a whole. So remember, class here, uh, damages for breach of the entire contract if the 
um, uh, breach is material. Now, uh, if the breach is severable, meaning this is uh, divisible, uh, remember, it will merely give rise to a claim for the compensation for the particular installment that was not paid by the buyer or for the particular installment that was not delivered by the seller, but not a right to treat the whole contract as broken because the contract here is severable or divisible. Now, uh, take note also of the second exception where a separate price was not fixed for each installment. So here, in the event that the seller fails to deliver an installment, the buyer uh, should be able to choose between fulfillment and rescission of the obligation with payment of damages in either case. So here, uh, class, take note that um, delivery is by installments. But uh, remember, yung mga installments na to, ang kanilang bayad is uh, as a whole. So, in case, remember, the seller fails to deliver an installment, the buyer um, should be able to choose between fulfillment plus damages or rescission plus damages. Uh, that is in accordance with 1191. Also, in case class that um, the payment is by installment and uh, yung delivery uh, pwedeng uh, 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 pwedeng minsan, minsan na lang but uh, remember here class um, yung um, payment is by uh, installment yan. so the remedy should also apply in favor of the seller in case the buyer fails to pay the purchase price within the period agreed upon so the seller here has to choose can choose between fulfillment plus damages and also rescission plus damages. So take note class here that the breach must be um yung substantial breach. The remedy of rescission is not available in case the breach is only slight or casual. So anyway, yung question whether or not the breach is substantial is dependent upon the circumstances. Kaya maraming nagde-demandahan dahil sa mga ganitong klaseng provision dependent upon the circumstances. Now, uh, take note of 1584, the right of the buyer to examine the goods. So, uh, obviously, actual delivery is contemplated here. Siyempre, paano niya may examine if there is no actual delivery? So, in other words, ownership of the goods shall be transferred only upon actual delivery and subject to a reasonable opportunity of examining them to determine if the goods are in conformity with the contract. So this uh, right of inspection is a condition precedent to transfer of ownership. So obviously, there must be actual delivery pagka-deliver, buyer has a right to examine. Now, um, yung right to examine niya, bibigyan siya ng reasonable opportunity to examine. And uh, if the buyer finds that the goods delivered are in conformity with the contract, dun pa lamang magkakaroon ng transfer ng ownership. So, examination of the goods is a condition to transfer ownership. Siyempre, unless there is a stipulation to the contrary. Um, what are about the rules in case the goods are delivered as COD or not a COD? So here, by the terms of uh, the contract class, the seller is authorized or required to send the goods to the buyer through a carrier. So take note of the general rule here. Delivery of the goods to the carrier for the purpose of transmission to the buyer is delivery to the buyer. We already studied that in 1523. Now uh, take note that uh, although title passes to the buyer by mere delivery to the carrier, um, the buyer 
unless yun ngang goods are paid as COD, which is the normal procedure daw in importations, the buyer has the right to examine the goods before paying. So, take note, uh, yung right to examine the goods, again, is a condition precedent to paying after ownership has passed. Tanda nyo dito yung general rule natin. Delivery to carrier is already delivery to the buyer. Now, if you deliver to the buyer, remember, delivery transfers ownership. So, kay buyer na yan. But uh, remember here, class, that um, the buyer has the right to examine the goods before paying, bago siya magbayad. Kasi kanina, doon sa unang uh, rule natin, in case of um, uh, actual delivery to the uh, buyer, i-inspect muna niya yung goods bago matransfer yung ownership. Kasi uh, habang ini-inspect niya, hindi pa naman niya tinanggap yung delivery nun eh. So if the buyer accepts delivery, that is the time the goods are uh, the, own the ownership is transferred. Now here in number one, take note na pagka kasi diniliver na sa carrier, parang diniliver na sa buyer. So the buyer actually had no opportunity to examine the goods before the, the ownership has been transferred to him. Pero remember class that uh, examination of goods here is a condition precedent to paying the price. Uh, kasi ownership has already passed. Ngayon, kung magbabayad or hindi ang buyer dun sa goods which are already delivered to the carrier, which is equivalent of delivery to him, which is equivalent to having ownership of the goods, pwede niyang i-inspect muna yung uh, goods. What else? Um, number two, it should be noted that even if the sale is COD, kasi di ba sa number one, sabi, exception ang COD, um, the buyer is allowed to examine the goods before payment of the price. So, alam nyo naman sa COD, di ba ang ating uh, rules sa collect on delivery is that the buyer has to pay first before he will examine. Um, actually, even in number one, it is very clear that this is an exception also um, unless the goods are sent COD, in which case, class, pay first before you will examine. But uh, obviously, syempre, alam niyo naman ang ating uh, loss. Marami tayo talagang um, paraan para guluhin ang loss. So anyway, it should be noted that even in a COD sale, the buyer is allowed to examine before payment if it is agreed upon or permitted by the usage of trade. So if stipulated, sige, tingnan mo muna bago mo bayaran. Or Sige, tingnan mo muna bago mo bayaran. Total yan naman ang nakasanayan. So, in that case, even in a COD sale, inspection before payment is allowed. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dyan. What else? Right of examination is not absolute, obviously. So, the seller is bound to afford the buyer a reasonable opportunity of examining the goods only on request. So, um, however, if the seller refused a reasonable opportunity for inspection, the buyer may rescind the contract naman and recover the price or any part of it that he has uh, paid. So, yun na nga, it is not... Um, Right, uh, it is not uh, an absolute right. So, magkakaroon ka lang ng right to examine on request. But, um, yun na nga, dapat uh, yung right to examine is availed of within a reasonable time para nga naman yung uh, seller ay hindi hintay ng hintay. Now, if the seller does not allow yung reason, absolute, it is not absolute in such a way that um, you must request it and also, um, number two, you must do it within a reasonable time. At, not at your leisure kung kailan mo lang gusto. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dyan. So, anyway, if the seller refuses to grant the right of inspection, buyer can may receive the contract and recover any part of the price paid. Now, um, 
take note, again, as I've already stated, the right is to be exercised within a reasonable time. So a reasonable opportunity to examine the goods to ascertain whether or not they are in conformity with the contract. So such opportunity must be av availed of within reasonable time so that the seller may not suffer delay or undue prejudice. Kawawa naman yung seller, hintay siya ng hintay. Tapos ginost mo lang pala siya. So, um, hindi mo pala inspect yung palang ibig sabihin. So, remember, right must be exercised within a reasonable time. So, also, the right to examine before payment may be waived um, by stipulation. So, right of inspection may be given up by the buyer by stipulation. So, the buyer, the waiver did not be an express terms. And also, take note, class, Ang inspection naman is by request. If you don't request, obviously, um, hindi, ka, hindi mo na siya in -avail. There is a waiver of the right. So, anyway, waiver can also be impliedly, katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo, etc., etc. But, um, obviously, um, buyer is still uh, entitled to examine the goods after delivery and also payment of the price. So, yun ang tandaan natin dito. So, anyway... What else? So, these are the rules when uh, the buyer rejects the goods. So, bakit nga ba i-reject ng buyer ang goods? So, probably, nung in-inspect niya yung mga goods, they prove to be unsuitable or they fail to conform with the contract. So, reject ang mga goods. So, syempre, the buyer is um, allowed to reject yung mga goods na yan, not to accept delivery and obviously, not to pay the price as well. Now, uh, the first rule is that the buyer is not bound to return them to the seller. Ano lang ang obligation ng buyer? It is sufficient for the buyer to notify the seller that he refuses to accept the goods. So, hindi niya kailangang mag, um, magpakabayani at ibalik ito sa seller. Kailangan lang daw ng uh, buyer is to notify or sabihan ng seller that he is refusing to accept the goods. What else? Number two, the option to reject must be exercised uh, and notice of rejection must be given to the seller within a reasonable time unless a definite period is fixed by the contract. So, reasonable time, magbigay ka agad uh, dun sa makatarungang period ng uh, pagbibigay ng notice of rejection. Huwag ka masyadong magtatagal. What else? Um, number three, receipt of the goods under a contract of sale constitute an acceptance of them if the right of rejection is not exercised within a reasonable time. Sabi ko nga, dapat reasonable time. I-reject mo na sila kung talagang ayaw mo, hindi yung pinatagal mo pa, tapos i-reject mo din. Diba? Kawawa naman yung tao. Ay, parang iba na yata. Kawawa naman yung seller. Remember, pinaghintay-hintay mo yung seller. Yung pala, hindi mo naman pala type yung goods niya. E di kung hindi mo rin pala type, e di sana, sinabi mo na kaagad, hindi yung pinaasa mo pa si seller. Parang iba na yung sinasabi ko. Pero tama naman yung concept ko, diba? But again, take note class. The question of what is a reasonable time is a question of fact. It will take account um, of all relevant circumstances. Probably the nature of the goods, the usage of trade, kailangan pag-isipan yan para sabihin uh, reasonable time. If the goods are perishable, maghintay ka ba ba ng dalawang buwan bago ka magbigay ng notice of rejection? Siyempre, hindi na. Diba? Kung medyo matanda na yung mga goods, sabihin nyo na kaagad, ay ayoko yan, diba? Etc, etc. So, parang iba na naman yun. Dapat remember, within a reasonable uh, time, yung makatarungan naman. So, yun ang tandaan natin, but reasonable time is based on the circumstances. So, obviously, there is no hard and fast rule for this one. What else? Um, take note also of 1585, the modes of manifesting acceptance. Paano ba um, pinapakita ang pagtanggap ng goods. Diyos ko naman, pati ba ba naman to? Obviously, express acceptance. Ay, I accept your goods. Yun lang yun. Diyos ko, buyer after the goods are delivered, intimates, intimates pa talaga yung term, tells the seller verbally or in writing that he accepts the goods. Uy, pre, okay na to, tanggap na to. So, yun ang express acceptance. What else? Number two, 
it can also be implied acceptance. So implied acceptance is um, number one, when a buyer does an, does an act which only an owner can do. So uh, remember, after delivery of the goods, the, the buyer will do an act which is adverse to the ownership of the seller. Anong example niyan? Pagkatanggap ni buyer ng goods, pagka-inspect niya, okay, sabi niya, okay, sabi niya, ganun. Tapos anong ginawa niya? Binenta niya sa iba. So, remember that is an act of ownership which uh, only the owner obviously can do. Now, if the buyer exercises this act of ownership, syempre, it implies acceptance of the goods. Eh, syempre, pagka nagkaroon na ng acceptance of the goods, meron ng ownership on the part of the buyer. Kasi nga, di ba, sabi ko sa inyo, delivery transfers ownership. So, acceptance of delivery will transfer ownership to the buyer. And if the buyer exercises um, acts of ownership that is adverse to the seller, remember, there is implied acceptance. but mo gagawin yan kung hindi mo tinatanggap yung goods at hindi na transfer Ang, hindi na accept ang delivery at na transfer ang ownership. So yun ang uh, implied acceptance. Number one, number two, if there is failure to return after a reasonable lapse of time. Ang tagal-tagal na, hindi mo pa binabalik. So retains the good without uh, intimating his rejection. So the buyer does not state that he is rejecting the goods and Sobrang tagal na, hindi na reasonable yung time na hinihintay ng seller. There is implied um, acceptance of the goods. So, retention of the goods is a strong evidence that the buyer has accepted uh, ownership of the goods. So, what else? Um, take note class that acceptance is not a bar to an action for damages under 1586. So, sabi sa 1586, um, even if the goods are accepted by the buyer, the seller is still liable for damages or other legal remedies, even rescission for breach of promises or warranties in the contract of a sale. So, take note also that the buyer, if meron pa siyang balance, is allowed to set up set up breach of warranty or promise as a set of or counterclaim for the price. Ay, merong partial breach dito. Merong partial violation ng warranty. Um, ano na lang, imbis na mag, ano ka na lang, action quantity minoris, imbis na mag-file ka pa dun, bawasan na lang yung uh, purchase price because of uh, breach, uh, 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 partial breach of warranty. So, pwede naman yan, no problem. So, um, Counterclaim for the price. So, yun ang 1586. Uh, take note also, in addition to that, that um, notice to seller of breach of promise of warranty, you have to notify also the seller. Siyempre, malay nyo, he wants to make good yung kanyang um, breach of... Uh, malay nyo, gusto niya gawa ng paraan. Sayang naman, di ba? So, but, but to be fair... Uh, Notice must be given to the seller of any breach within a reasonable time. So, dapat a uh, reasonable time ang pag-uumpisa ng pagka-count is not simply from the moment the buyer knows of the defect, but from the time the buyer ought to have known it. Dapat alam mo na ito noon pa lang. So, dapat dun kayo magsimul. Itong time pa lang na to, pagka-deliver sa'yo, dapat alam mo na kung defective yan or hindi. Dap yun yung ought to know. Dapat alam mo na uh, na defective yan or hindi. So, remember, you will count the time from that. From the time you actually know of the defect or from the time na dapat alam mo na na mayroong uh, defect. So, prompt exercise of opportunity for discovering defects is very important or essential. So, obviously, the purpose here is to protect the seller against belated or late claims, which um, will prevent him from making a prompt investigation. Siyempre, baka mamaya lalo pang lumala yung defect. So, dapat maaga mong madetect yung defect para maaga rin makapag-investigate ang uh, seller to determine yung talagang cost and extent of his liability. So, again, for the seller to take other steps in case gusto niyang uh, to make good yung kanyang breach of warranties.
So, para magawa niya ng paraan sana. So, yun ang 1586. Uh, in 1587, the buyer, buyer refuses to accept the goods, but the refusal of the buyer is justified. So, the following are the rules. Take note that um, the buyer has a duty to take care of the goods but without the obligation to return the goods to the seller. So here, the buyer refuses to accept the goods, but take note uh, here that um, the refusal of the buyer is rightful, meaning he is justified in refusing the goods. Uh, kailan nangyayari yun? The goods are not of the kind and, kind and quality agreed upon. So in short, ito yung nasa contract. Ito yung deliver niya, magkaiba, hindi magkatugma yung pinag-usapan. So, take note here that the buyer has a duty to take care of the goods, but the buyer is not necessarily required to return the goods to the seller. But, uh, syempre, take reasonable care of the goods, but nothing more can be demanded from the buyer. So, yun ang uh, unang duty ng buyer. Take reasonable care of the goods, but you do not have to return. Number two, um, in case naman of the seller, the seller must take delivery of the goods. So, buyer rejects, buyer rejects justifiably. Seller has the burden of taking delivery of the said goods. So, siyang magpakuha dun sa place of where it was delivered etc etc siya yung gumastos para doon uh, hindi obligation ng buyer to return the goods to the seller seller should take delivery of the goods what else um the seller has a uh, seller bears the risk of loss for the goods so while the goods are in the possession of the buyer under yung circumstances where it was uh, rejected um by the buyer so, obviously, because the buyer did not accept this uh, delivery, ownership is not transferred. So, applying the general rule of uh, res perit domino, owner will bear the risk of loss. The goods are at the risk of the seller. Uh, also, take note that the buyer is not deemed and is not liable as a depositary unless he will volunteer to become a depositary, in which case he must safely take care of the goods in the meantime. So, yun ang um, tandaan natin sa uh, number, uh, number three. So, the seller will uh, bear the risk of loss. Sabi naman din kasi, di ba, the buyer uh, should take reasonable uh, care uh, of the goods which um, are in his possession hanggat hindi pa kinukuha ng seller. Also, take note that the buyer has a right to resell the goods. So, kailan magkakaroon ng right to resell ang buyer? If the seller, after being notified by uh, by the buyer of the fact that the buyer rejects the goods take note na di ba pagka ni reject na buyer ang goods kailangan lang niyang i-notify si seller now the seller has a duty to take delivery or meaning sa tagalog ang seller ang kukuha ng mga goods na ni reject ng buyer mula doon sa buyer now if the seller fails to take delivery of the goods remember that the buyer may resell the goods. Now, the provisions uh, governing resale by an unpaid seller when the buyer is in default will apply. So, the rules in 1533 will apply in this case, in case of resale by the buyer of the unclaimed goods uh, of the seller. Now, um... Take note of 1588. These are the effects if the buyer's refusal to accept delivery of the goods is unjustifiable. The general rule is that the buyer will become owner. Kasi nga, syempre, delivery transfers ownership. So, um, uh, dineliver na sa buyer. 
the buyer does not accept yung uh, goods. So, uh, take note that the buyer will become the owner. Bakit? Kasi yung kanyang refusal is unjustified. Wala namang dahilan eh. Wala namang problema sa mga goods. Even if sinabject mo siya sa inspection, sabihin na natin. And the buyer finds nothing wrong with them. So, pagka ni-reject mo yan, nang babadrip ka na lang. So, anong sabi ng law? Babadripin din kita, buyer. Buyer will become the owner of the goods. So, title passes to the buyer. And obviously, risk of loss is borne by the buyer the moment the goods are placed at his disposal. But obviously, again, because this is a general rule, there is an exception. So, the exception is if there is a contrary stipulation or if the seller reserves ownership of the goods as sort of a security for payment of the price. So, Siyempre, because it is stipulated, siyempre, um, liberty of contracts, autonomy, the contract is the law between the parties, so wala tayong magagawa. Nag-agree ka dyan, seller, eh, they suffer the consequences. And also, if the seller, kung masyado siyang sigurista, um, he reserved ownership um, of the goods as security for payment of the price. This reservation uh, will work against this uh, provision. So, in short, even if the buyer unjustifiably refuses to accept the goods, pero kasi nga, ni-reserve naman ng seller until payment of the price. So, hindi mangyayaring payment of the price, seller will continue to become the owner even if the buyer unjustifiably rejects yung uh, goods. What else? Uh, 1589. Vendi or buyer is liable for interest where the payment is made after delivery. So, here, um, deliver first and then pay later. Now, um, if the interest is expressly stipulated. So, syempre, pinag-usapan na mayroong interest in case payment is made after delivery. The rate stipulated will govern. So, take note that uh, if the rate stipulated is uh, 5%, etc., that will be the rate that will govern. Anyway, the interest um, is counted uh, from the time of delivery up to time of payment only. So, stipulation of the parties to pay interest here may be oral. So, this is an exception to 1596. Not an exception, but... um. A qualification, uh, kasi sa 1596, remember, it will it requires that interest payments to be due must be uh, stipulated in writing. But uh, this will not apply uh, in case of contracts of sale. Yung 59, 1956 will apply only to contracts of loan. So kung meron kayong utang, tapos gusto nyong... Uh, kung may, nagpautang kayo, eh, kayo yung creditor, gusto nyong maningil ng interest, please make sure that uh, there is a stipulation to pay interest and such stipulation is uh, in writing. So, before interest can be demandable but not in a contract of sale. What else? Um, if the parties fail to fix uh, the rate, then the legal rate of interest. So, Take note that the legal rate of interest, contrary to your book since 2013, is 6% per annum. Hindi ko alam ba't di pa ayusin yun. Reprint ng reprint, pero yung mga mali, hindi pa rin inaayos. May bagong reprint ang oblico na. I'm not sure kung inayos na yung mga typographical errors to that. What else? Um, here, no demand is necessary for interest to be uh, due. And uh, uh, how about number two? Uh, fruits or income received by the vendee um, from the thing sold. So, obviously, the buyer is liable. So, to be liable, two conditions must exist. The thing sold has been delivered and that it produces fruits or income. So, 
um, kailangan the buyer is liable to pay for fruits and interest existing doon sa property. So, even if a term has been fixed for the payment of the price, magbabayad pa rin ng interest ang buyer uh, from the time of delivery up to the time of actual payment. So, magbabayad, magbabayad pa rin siya ng uh, fruits or income. So, receive uh, from the thing sold. So, uh, reason by the law is that the fruits or interest is sufficient to warrant payment of uh, interest. So, magbabayad siya in case, magbabayad siya ng interest in case the property bears income or fruits. Yan ang tandaan natin. So, number three, uh, no demand is necessary for that as well. Number three, if the buyer is guilty of default, so there is a uh, legal delay or mora in the payment of the agreed price. Obviously, interest is due from the time of judicial extrajudicial demand by the uh, seller for the payment of the price. So here, obviously, demand is necessary. So demand by the vendor is the starting point for the uh, commencement of legal uh, delay on the part of the buyer. What else? Um, uh, 1590 talks about the right of the vendor to suspend payments. Kailan ba pwede suspend ng uh, vendor yung uh, payment? So, sabi sa 1590, if he is um, disturbed in the possession or ownership of the thing bought. So, merong uh, eviction. So, disturbed in possession or ownership. Or, number two, he has a well-grounded fear that his possession or ownership would be disturbed by a vindicatory action or foreclosure of the mortgage. So in number one, take note that there is actual um, eviction of the buyer from the possession of the property. So kung meron pa siyang hindi nababayaran, meaning 1590 applies only if there is a balance, obviously. Why will you suspend payments kung bayad mo na buo? So, in uh, 1590, uh, the disturbance in possession is by virtue of um, probably an eviction suit which the third party person claimant has won against the buyer. So, if the buyer meron pa siyang um, balance, can suspend payment of the price. And remember here also further that the seller is liable for breach of warranty against eviction. Bakit mo pa siya babayaran? Napalayas ka na nga. Uh, disturbed in the possession or ownership of the thing uh, bought. In number two, um, probably example of this one is um, seller sells a land to buyer. So buyer, um, um, buyer accepts delivery of the land. Siguro ganun na lang. So, seller sold and delivered to the buyer a parcel of land. Sabihin na natin the parcel of land is worth uh, 1 million pesos. Tapos, let us say, yung uh, kanyang uh, down payment is 500 pesos, eh, 500,000 pesos. Alam 500 lang. 500,000 pesos. And the balance payable uh, of 500,000 pesos payable in uh, 10 years. So, yun na, 10 years. Tapos, um, so here there's a balance of the purchase price. Meron further payments to be made by the buyer. But um, soon after yung sale, there is a third person who claims ownership of the property or the land at, by uh, virtue of an acquisitive title or meaning acquisitive prescription. So merong, uh, remember, if in good faith, 10 years. If in bad faith, 30 years. So let us say, um, matagal na pala siya doon. So, uh, let us say, 30 years na talaga. So, meron ng acquisitive prescription. So, merong nagkiklaim uh, doon sa land and the claim is against the buyer. So, anyway, itong si buyer, um, hindi pa naman talaga siya pinapalayas by an action filed in court. There is just a reasonable um reasonable and well grounded fear na siya ay mapalayas or ma, ma ano ba yung deprive of possession or ownership of the thing 
by a vindicatory action or a foreclosure of mortgage. So here, this is a vindicatory uh, action. So anyway, um, take note here, class. Um, si buyer, obviously, can suspend payments to the seller. Bakit? Meron na kasing nagkiklaim na iba. Siyempre, meron siyang reasonable and well-grounded fear that he will be deprived of the property because there is yun nga a uh, uh, fear that an uh, action revindicatoria yun ang tawag nila vindicatory action so action revindicatoria will be uh, brought against uh, him so hindi naman kailangan talaga na na demand na siya the law does not require that in number two what it requires is a reasonable and well-grounded fear of an uh vindicatory of a vindicatory action or foreclosure of the mortgage now what if class um dadagdagan ko yung aking problem what if in order to um for the peace of mind of the buyer the buyer pays off the third person who claims title by acquisitive prescription of 30 years so take note uh here pinay off niya binayaran na ni buyer itong si third person. So, malamang, wala na yung uh, reasonable and well-grounded fear of a vindicatory action uh, to be filed against the buyer by the third person. So, anyway, question. Should, uh, yun na nga, buyer pay off third person? Is the seller liable for his warranty against um, eviction? So that will be a question I will ask in class. So anyway, um, so 1590. So if you are following my lectures, alam niyo yung sagot dito. So anyway, in 15, alam niyo yung sagot sa tinanong ko. In 1590, uh, take note that um, buyer is entitled to retain yung price na hindi pa niya na ibabayad. But the buyer is not entitled to recover yung price already paid. Yan. So, anyway, um, Vendi has no right to suspend payments in the following uh, circumstances. Um, even if there is a disturbance in possession, remember, if the vendor gives security for the return of the price in a proper case, Oh, binigyan ka naman pala niya ng security. Anong binigay niya? Meron siyang binigay na uh, lupa to secure return of the purchase price, etc. Lupa na nga, lupa pa uli. So, whatever it is that will secure yung um, payment of the purchase price. So, pagka napalayas ka dyan, bibigyan kita ng ano, eh, ibibigay ko to sa yung um, itong property na to para bayad dun sa binigay mo sa akin na um, pera or itong pera na to ibabalik ko sa uh, i-deposit ko sa banko in escrow ganyan so pwede yon but else uh, number 2 if it has been stipulated that not notwithstanding such a uh, contingency the vendor must make payment so nakalagay sa contract between buyer and seller that if there is disturbance or reasonable and well grounded fear of disturbance payments uh, should continue because that is the stipulation, syempre, it will continue uh, despite yung disturbance or a reasonable fear of disturbance. What else? If the vendor has caused a disturbance or danger to cease, syempre, wala na ang disturbance. So, probably in the problem that I gave you, it is the vendor who pays off the third person uh, who is claiming by acquisitive prescription. What else? Number uh, four, if the disturbance is a mere act of uh, trespass, so, uh, if uh, this is a mere act of trespass, oy, umalis ka lang dyan, anana, wala, wala talagang claim, wala talagang uh, title of ownership. Unlike in our example a while ago, there is color of title to it eh, kasi by acquisitive prescription. Pa, paano kung may nagpunta lang doon, may dalang barel, pinaalis ka, umalis ka naman, takot ka naman. So, that is um, a mere act of trespass which will not entitle the, the buyer to suspend payment. What else? Vendi has fully paid the price. So this does not make sense. I do not know why they added this. Because um, wala nang price to pay. Bayad na eh. So there's nothing to suspend, obviously. So um, 
uh, what else? Seller may immediately sue for the rescission of the sale in 1591. So, um, what are the instances when the seller has reasonable uh, grounds to fear for to fear loss of the immovable property sold, and and the uh, and uh, seller has reasonable ground to fear loss of the price. So. Uh, seller may sue for rescission immediately kung merong danger, reasonable grounds to fear loss of the immovable and also loss of the price. So this will contemplate a situation where there has already been delivery of the immovable property but obviously the buyer has not yet paid the price. So this will apply also in both cash sales and also to sale in installment. So take note for 1591 to apply, both grounds should exist. Hence the use of the conjunction and. Kailangan merong reasonable grounds um, to fear loss of the immovable and also reasonable grounds to fear loss of the price before you will apply this provision. Probably yung uh, buyer is negligent in the handling of his finances. Probably the buyer is negligent in uh, the handling of the immovable immovable property that he, that is uh, already that has been already delivered to him that is why um your article would apply now if this uh, uh grounds do not appear uh syempre, the seller can still uh, rescind yung contract not based on 1591 but based on the provisions of 1191 now, uh, take note of 1592. 1592 provides for automatic rescission of sale of immobile property uh, as a stipulation in the contract of a sale. So, in the contract of sale, remember, yung um, isang stipulation nila is that in case the buyer fails to pay the price, the uh, there is automatic rescission of the contract of sale so general rule talaga naman natin that the seller may ask for rescission of the contract if the buyer fails to pay the agreed price as provided for in 1191 pero syempre in case of real properties dinagdagan pa nila ng uh, rules so this, uh, remember, is subject to stipulations agreed upon by the parties uh, and to the provisions of 1592. So in 1592, ang sabi dyan, it is one of the stipulations of the contract that it will be um, uh, rescinded in case of non-payment of the purchase uh, price. So um, anyway, Automatic dapat ang rescission according to the stipulation of the parties. But take note in 1592 na kahit automatic ang stipula uh, automatic ang um, rescission ng contract of sale in case of non-payment, kailangan pa rin daw na magkaroon ng demand for rescission of the contract yung um, vendor. So, it may be judicially or by a notarial act. And to add to that class, bago ipadala itong demand for rescission of the contract, kahit na may automatic provision stating that there is automatic rescission, kahit na may stipulation there's, there is automatic uh, rescission, pwede pa rin bayaran ng buyer yung price even after the stipulated even after the expiration of the stipulate, stipulated period of payment. So imagine, mayroong automatic rescission clause. Tapos, pwede pang buy, despite that, the buyer can still pay for the purchase price. Kahit pa ba, mayroong expiration ng period of payment provided class that there is no demand for rescission made yet by the seller. So, in our law down, there is no existing provision which will authorize automatic rescissions of contracts of 
sale for non-payment of the purchase price. So, kahit ba meron tayong automatic rescission clause, kahit ba nag-expire na yung term, hanggat hindi pa nagkakaroon ng judicial or uh, demand for rescission by notarial act, pwede pa rin magbayad ang buyer. So, uh, what else? Um, the right of the seller to rescind is not absolute, obviously. The courts may even extend the period for payment. Pero syempre, the period for payment cannot be extended um, if there is already a demand for uh, rescission by suit. Ibig sabihin, nag-file na ng action for rescission or by notarial act if that is allowed under the contract. So, obviously, class, the court may not grant or give the buyer a new period kung nag-expire na yung, um, um, kung meron ng demand for rescission. 1592 is not applicable in case of um, sale by installment of real estate. So, yung 1592 kasi contemplates an absolute uh, sale. So, uh, in 1592, yung absolute sale na yan will require a judicial action or a notarial act for rescission. But this will not apply in case of um, sales on installment of real property when the parties have laid down the procedure to be followed in, the, in case the buyer fails to fulfill his obligation. Kasi nga naman, meron naman silang provision sa contract. Tapos ang sale nila is installment pa. So if there's a provision in the contract, again, the contract is the law between the parties. But obviously, it must not violate the provisions of the Maseda law as well, being the um, rule for that. Um, what else? This will not apply also to contracts to sell or conditional sale of real estate. So it will not... Um, apply to mere promises to, say, to sell, meaning executory contracts of sale. Ibig sabihin, wala pang na-deliver, wala pang nabayaran. And here, class, obviously, because nothing is delivered yet and nothing has been paid yet, title is uh, with the buyer until the fulfillment of the positive condition, which is, in this case, payment of the price. So, yun ang tandaan natin. So, uh, will not apply to contracts to uh, sell. What else? Um, automatic rescission of the sale of movable property in 1593. So, in 1593, again, pinag-uusapan na naman natin yung um, stipulation by the parties that in case of a non-payment of the purchase price of personal properties, uh, the contract is automatically uh, rescinded. So, this is uh, this applies in case of personal properties which has not yet been delivered to the buyer. So, the, uh, the seller can rescind the contract as a matter of right uh, if the vendee does not accept delivery of the goods of the goods or pay the price unless a credit period for its payment has been stipulated. So, pwede ang automatic rescission in case of movable properties provided that the, the goods has not yet been delivered and um, Vendi does not accept delivery. Siyempre, obviously, if you do not accept delivery, um, the, the goods had, had not yet been delivered kasi nga, the buyer does not accept delivery. And also, the buyer um, refuses to pay the price unless you give the buyer period to pay. So, so mere failure of the buyer to comply with the terms of the contract will not rescind the same, obviously. Um, it is necessary that the seller should take some affirmative action indicating the intention to rescind. So, uh, parties may validly enter into an agreement that violation of the terms of the contract would cause cancellation even without judicial intervention or permission. As I've said before, in case of movables, pwede ang automatic rescission clause. Bakit kaya pwede? 
uh, because yun nga sabi ni sa book ninyo personal properties are not capable of maintaining a stable price in the market so ayun ang uh, main reason kasi nagpa-fluctuate ang price ng um, uh, personal property so um, what else siguro um, example na lang let us say buyer and seller agreed that a car will be uh, delivered on uh, let us say May 15 so car will be delivered tapos price will be paid on the same day let us say place of payment and delivery is at the house of the buyer by stipulation of the parties so uh, if the buyer does not appear doon sa place and time of payment imagine mo bahay na nga niya hindi pa siya nag-appear on the said day doon sa said place uh, remember class um the sale can be considered as automatically rescinded if there is an automatic rescission uh, clause. Kasi, take note here, class, that the uh, buyer is not there to accept delivery and the buyer does not pay the price. So, at the stipulated date and uh, time. So, anyway, yun ang ating uh, rules dyan. So, uh, that will be the end of chapter 5, the obligations of the buyer. Please uh, stand by for chapter 6, which will talk about actions for breach of contract of sale of goods. So that will be it. Uh, thank you, class, and good night.